When you create a parameter query, you get a chance to have the query ask the user for some input, like please enter state so that they can have a query for any state they want for their customer records. So you can supply additional criteria for the query. In fact, you can do ranges, you can have more than one question, whatever it is that makes sense for the database itself. Now, Access can display in the dialog box up to 50 characters in the prompt message. So you do have to be short and sweet, but you can create a message that asks the user for what type of input they're looking for. Do keep in mind what is not allowed is a period, an exclamation mark, or square brackets, and that's because each one of those have very special meanings within Access, so it will get confused to thinking it's another parameter or another piece of code. And again, the message itself should be simple and sweet, and it also should not match a field name anywhere in the question. When you create a match parameter query, and you do it alone in a criteria, the case is going to be what we call case insensitive or not case sensitive. So if the parameter query asks for input and they put in OGG, then that means with a capital O, with a lowercase o, but even though it is not case sensitive or case insensitive as we call it, um, it doesn't do a parcel search. So it would not find OGG-32, it would not find froggy-12 because again it doesn't do a partial match, it only has to do with an exact match but not one that's case sensitive. However, you can do a wildcard, so in the parameter you can say like, which means they're going to get an opportunity to type in OGG, but we can build in this part in the back end. So if you were to do like star OGG, then it would find this one, it would find this one, but it still wouldn't find froggy 12 because the asterisk is in the beginning, not necessarily the beginning and the end. You can use an ampersand, which will join two character strings together. And we can use them with the asterisk. So we can say, like, anything you put in and the supplier ID and anything else that might follow. And again, this is all built into the parameter behind the scenes, which means we're going to find OGG, Froggy 12, and 64 OGG. So the ampersand literally concatenate things together. I always like to use first name and last name. If I have a first name field and a last name field and I want a full name, I can simply do first name ampersand last name and in this case it would be, if it was me, Sandra Batakis and it would pull it together. So we can use that in all sorts of different places but we can use it a lot here in queries and parameter queries. In this demonstration, we're going to create a parameter query. Now, a parameter query allows us to pull up a data sheet suppliers that match some sort of parameter that I input at the time of query. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to create a brand new query to show an inventory list. That's going to be our start. So here, we're going to go into Create Queries and go right into Query Design. Now in Query Design, I'm just going to add the inventory table and close out. I don't have to add more than one table for the fields that I'm looking for. Now what I'll be looking for are certain fields out of this table. So we'll start off with Product Code, and I'm just double-clicking to put them there. Department, Supplier ID, we want a description, Units in Stock, Location, Rack, and the last time that we ordered it. So now we have all the fields we'd like in the report, but we need to add a criteria, and the criteria is going to be in the Supplier ID and it's going to be a prompt. It's not going to be a hard-coded query. So what I'm going to do is use square brackets, and anything in square brackets will be asked.
So note a square bracket, enter the supplier ID, square bracket. Always remember you have the zoom where you can enter the supplier ID. And just for the record, I used a shortcut that's Shift F2 for zoom. I tend to use that quite a bit. It's been around forever, but never seems to make itself obvious. So now, let's save the database. We have to give this a query. And we'll run it. So enter in the supplier ID. Let's look for Woodstock. And notice when I hit Woodstock, only the Woodstock records present themselves. Also, understand that I use uppercase and lowercase. It's just the way that I type. It doesn't matter. It is not case sensitive. So now let's go ahead and run the query one more time. We'll close out of this. We'll run the query. And let's just look for wood. And when I click on OK, notice it doesn't come up with anything. And it doesn't come up with anything because we don't have any partial searches on there. Now, if you ever want to refresh this query, notice I can hit Refresh All, and I can enter in the supplier ID. And notice it comes back. So I can close the query, rerun it, or I can just refresh it. And again, it is not doing a partial search. So when you're looking for partial searches, it's not going to be matched with the current query. We have to use wildcards to provide that sort of flexibility. And we can do that by typing in the actual wildcards themselves. So let's take a look at the query for find suppliers. We're going to open this up in design view. Now the criteria for the supplier ID is to enter the supplier ID, but it has to be a perfect match. So we can go ahead and add a wildcard to this query to find the text anywhere within the field. So we're going to use the term like, and we're looking for an asterisk, which is your wildcard. Now you still have to put it in quotes, so it takes it as something that you literally typed in the expression. So it's going to be anything like an asterisk and, that's how we concatenate, now we have enter in the supplier ID, but we want to say basically anything in, in, before and anything after whatever it is we type in. So we're going to concatenate it again with anything using, again, the asterisk as a wild card. Now let's go ahead and click on OK. We're going to save it. We're going to run it. And let's see how this works. And there we have it. So all I did was type in wood, and it could be anything before wood and then wood or anything after wood, meaning the wild card meant as long as it's somewhere in the actual supplier ID. So now let's hit refresh all, and I'm just going to type in a single letter. This is going to show us a supplier ID with K anywhere in the actual supplier ID field. So again, we have a full wildcard as long as it contains whatever it is we've entered in. And notice I've done two O's, Woodstock and Mal Maloof have both appeared. In this demonstration, we're going to create a query with multiple parameters. So what we want to do is we currently have a query that can actually search a range between two dates, but the dates are hard-coded. So we know that we can put under criteria, criteria date ordered between this and that, but what if we don't want it hard-coded? We want someone to be able to say, enter the beginning date and enter in the end date. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. I'm going to open up reorder date in design view, and you'll see here's my between command. Again, hard-coded. So what we want to do is we want to go ahead and change this. 
and we're going to change this by using those parameters instead of the dates themselves. So we're going to type this in, square brackets, and And that's all there is to it. So instead of the hard coding, square brackets will prompt for a question. So now, let's go ahead and run it. Enter in the start date. Enter in the end date. And you'll see we have everything that's been ordered from the month of June.